it's Yellow Chops, aka Jeff Sarabandon. I wanted to showcase playing your own backing tracks inside GarageBand on the iPad. To clarify, I mean exporting your own audio stem files from your DAW of choice and importing them into GarageBand on the iPad. Now this is a hack and it's not built into the app. What is built into the app is you can open your GarageBand project from your iPad to GarageBand on the Mac, but not the other way around. So this is as of GarageBand 1.0 and iOS 4.3.3. So let's get started. All right, so here I have my stem files imported into GarageBand on the iPad, and I got them from Ableton Live. And I'm going, I'm going to go ahead and play it for you so you can hear that it's the same files. Now on my iPad. So I basically have my drum loop, uh, my bass, brass sound, and uh, electric piano, and I have like different variations of that. But I can move around in there, so I can zoom in, and you can see it's a wave files there. Pretty cool. Can scroll to the end. So I mean, it's pretty cool. Uh, I can control levels for each one. I can mute them if I needed to. I'm mute the electric piano. I can pull the levels up and down. Pull the drums up. Pull the other ones down. And then you have solo too. Now, here's a thing you want to keep in mind if you're using GarageBand. GarageBand by default loops through the whole thing. So if I had it playing up to the end here, and uh, once it is at the very end, it goes back to the beginning. So you want to make sure that you have uh, some empty space at the very end to give you time to stop the track before it loops back to the beginning again. So it's pretty cool. So you have, uh, I have my audio stem files. You can have up to eight tracks uh, loaded into GarageBand. And I have uh, each track I can control levels separately. Or right now I'm only using really four. The other ones are just variations. I have two tracks that are variations of one. So I have seven, I'm sorry, uh, six in here. Um, but I'm only really only using four at a time. And I can control the levels separately, mute things, solo things if I need to. Um, so what's the, the benefit of doing it in uh, GarageBand on the iPad is that um, iPad's a lot more lightweight. Um, you have eight tracks, so I can control those levels independently of each other. I, I want to pull up the brass, I can, or you know, any of the eight tracks, I can adjust the levels as I need to. And the iPad tends to be more solid than a laptop. Um, so you know, that's what's kind of cool with the iPad, and it's super, super light. So when you're taking on a gig, you just, you know, you put it in your uh, keyboard bag and you don't even feel it. So you're saying, Yellow Chops, that's cool, but how do I do that? Well, let me show you. All right, so before you can import your files into GarageBand on the iPad, the first thing you need to do is you need to get your stem files. Um, I believe GarageBand on the iPad wants it to be 16-bit 44.1, and I believe it wants AIFF because it's Apple. So get your stem files from your DOS software. Make sure you set those settings accordingly. So you have AIFF, 16-bit, 44.1, and here's my stem files. And um, you want them all the same length. You don't want them all, I mean, that's how usually you give stem files, is they're all the same length. So you just import them. You don't have to worry about syncing and laying anything out. They all have the same length from beginning to end. Um, the other thing too is you want to note your the BPM of your project in your DAW. So if it's at 120 or 130 BPM, you want to note that down, write that down. Then you go back on your iPad, and I'll go to the song that I initially started off with. Now if you remember, the, one of the first things I told you when you, have, when you start from your DAW software, you need to take note of the BPM of the project. So basically you want to, you want to match that, that BPM on GarageBand on the iPad. So I know what mine is, so I go here, hit that uh, wrench icon upper right hand corner. And then you change the tempo right here. 
So you just change it to make sure it matches. And I put mine at 140, and then make sure it's the key. I don't think that matters. I don't know if it's doing any time stretching at all. And uh, after that, my measures line up with how it is on my uh, DOS software. So basically what you're doing is you need to create um, dummy audio files on your, in your project. So I did on mine when I first started off. I, I just added an audio recorder to each one. So you, when you go to instrument, you make sure you select the audio recorder. And then what you do is you just record nothing really. I mean, you just, you gotta create a, you basically just need to create an audio file in each track, okay? So once you do that, so what I did on mine, I'm sorry, is I just hit record on, I added an instrument, recorded just me saying track one or whatever, however you wanna do it. And then you go to the next track, do the same thing. Next thing, next track, same thing. So basically each, audio recorder track in GarageBand on the iPad has to have its own um, audio file already that you record into it. Once you do that, you connect your, um, your iPad to your laptop or to, to iTunes. So I'm going to go ahead and connect mine. I could go ahead and close out GarageBand on the iPad. And then you go to iTunes and then you go to apps and then you want to make sure that you're on your iPad and you have GarageBand selected under the apps tab in iTunes and then I'm actually going to go back to GarageBand here wait for it to load up and then you go to my songs and then you want to basically hit um, is it this one not that one. You want to hit this um, bottom left little icon there. It looks like an arrow pointing to the right. I'm going to touch on send to iTunes. And then here's an important step. It's asking if you want an iTunes AAC file or a GarageBand file. You want the GarageBand file. If you select the AAC, it's going to create a bounced file uh, I'm sorry, a mix down file of your project. So it just basically give you an audio, like an MP3 basically, and it sends it to iTunes. You don't want that. You want the GarageBand project. You send that. It's, it's saying, do I want to replace because I already did this before. So then I hit replace. And then if you go to iTunes, you'll see this is the name of the song. This is what I just sent to iTunes from my iPad. And then you say save to. And then um, I'm going to select. I'm going to select my desktop. And I think it's done. So I'll go ahead and open that. And here it is. Now here's the part that's kind of the hack part. You're not supposed to do. So basically, you go. You right-click the file. This is on um, on Mac OS X. Right-click the file. Open. Uh, I'm sorry, you show package contents and then you go to media and then look at that. Look at all those AIFF files. All you have to do is you have to grab your file, your stem files. So I'm going to go to mine, which are here. So here's my stem files. So then you just, what you're going to do is you're going to um, rename your stem files that you want to copy over with the same name that was in the GarageBand project. So here's, here's, my, here's the folder from, um, let me go back just so you can see everything. So here's the GarageBand project that I copied from the iPad, from iTunes, into um, my, my Mac. Go show package contents. So now I'm inside that folder. This is the project from the iPad. Go to media. Now here's the, the AIFF files that were created on the iPad. So basically, I go back to my um, stem files and I, I um, name them with the same name as these AIFF files and then I, and I copy them to this folder. So it's, it's, this is going to be the new GarageBand iPad project. 
So basically, you're just replacing the AIFF files because the the prod somewhere in this in this folder it's pointing to those AIFF files. So all you're doing is you're just swapping them out with yours. And once you do that, um, you can just copy it back. I'm not going to redo it because I've already done it. So I'll show you the I'll show you the one I actually already did. So that's this one here. See, you see those files are 41.5 meg? That's the same file size as my, my stem file. So let me show you the original, the one I got from the iPad. Let me close up this other stuff so you don't get too confused. Okay, you see this file size is uh, 389KB or kilobytes. That's obviously very, very small, especially for an audio file. And here is, this is this is the same uh, folder. I'm sorry, not the same folder. Another folder with the same project that I replace the AIFF files. These are my files that I put in. But you just gotta make sure you name it the same name. So if it has, um, you know, I think it just increments as you record the first one. It does zero one. The next one does zero two, et cetera, et cetera. And then you just get out of that. Go back to my desktop. And then this is the one I edited already. And then you just you just basically go to iTunes, hit add, and you're adding the one you just edited. And then that's that one there. And then hit choose. And it's adding it to the iPad right now. Now on the iPad, you go to um, this, I think it's like a download button. Let me go back. So Whatever you're in, you go to My Songs, and it exits out. Let me do it again. So, And then I hit this Download button right here. The, it's a second, second to the furthest left icon. It's like an arrow pointing down. And it's, it detects the, the new uh, project that I edited from my Mac. I hit that, and then it imports it in. Okay, so there you go. It loaded it up. Let me exit it, make sure this is the right project. See that? That's the one I edited. And it's in here. And then basically, I'm not going to show it in the video because it's going to take too long to do, but basically, you have to, each section can only be 32 measures long, and your file, your, if your backing track is only 32 measures, 32 bars or 32 measures long, then it's not an issue. But if it's more than that, you basically have to, um, you're basically creating a section, max it out, uh, say, uh, for example, say um, your, 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 total, uh, pro your total backing track is like 100 measures. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to copy it in the first section A and it's going to be measure 1 through 32. And then you're going to duplicate that section. You're going to say here, and then you're going to hit duplicate and it's going to create a section B. And then section B, you, you maximize it to 32, 32 bars. And then you got to, basically kind of move through your your wave file to make it the next 64 so it'd be 33 through through 64 and you got to go that all the way down through all your whole thing so it's pretty tedious again it's because it's more of a hack than um the actual official way but you can do it if you want to and you can put it in your in garage band and it, and it you know loads up in there and it, i've done it and it plays fine so you just it's a little tedious getting in there but once it's in there it, it plays through and it's been working out so far please feel free to leave any questions or comments below and if you found any of these videos to be beneficial to you in any way, or if you'd like to see any more videos going forward, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks.